Today on The Flush, we walk pheasant fields alongside American soldiers that nearly paid the ultimate price. Wasn't sure I was gonna make it home that day. Thanks to a man on a mission and his dogs, their battle scars finally have a chance to heal. The Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. America, the land of the free, thanks to our brave. At Buffalo Butte Ranch, I take aim with a few of our brave soldiers. You think they're ready? I think so. At the start of a classic South Dakota pheasant hunt. Okay, here you go, Greg. One more round here. There you go. How'd it go? Went well. Yeah, brand new gun, and uh, it's nice to find out how it shoots. Get more pleasure out of getting that Ranch ball. owner Marshall Springer leads our troops. Hope you'll have a great time, great experience with this. Try not to shoot the hand. Along with Sam Daly. We're gonna drive and block these fields. We're located South Central South Dakota. It's an area called the Golden Triangle because it's been known for the pheasant numbers for years. You know, we farm for the pheasants and we focus on the pheasants. They're great farmers, there's a lot of habitat, and uh, this is, you know, the birds live here. This is their home. This is Brass. Brass is a 100% rookie. Sam guides here each fall. So this is Lucky. He's three years old. Sam's a dog trainer from Minnesota that has a personal connection with each one of these veterans. Uh, this is Murphy. He's uh, about a year and a half. Especially to their dogs. First year hunting with them. Murphy belongs to Scott Lisberger. Believe it or not, Murph's never smelled a rooster. He's a goofball. He's a goofball. Yeah, he's very uh, hyper. That's Echo. Quinn Wilmarth's three-year-old Labrador Retriever. Like Murphy, hunting doesn't appear on Echo's resume either. Uh, she's my battle buddy. But she never leaves Quinn's side. We go everywhere together and just my constant companion. He's birdie. Got one, number two. <laughs> Thankfully, we have plenty of dog power and plenty of pheasants. Thank you. Look at that, huh? What a pretty bird. Marshall's birdie property gives Ryan Conrad and Greg Graves plenty of hope. I like it, that's perfect. Neither Ryan nor Greg have ever shot a pheasant. I hunted pheasant when I was about 16, once with my father. I got exactly zero birds and uh, so I didn't, I didn't go again. I, I'm excited. There you go. There you go. There you go, Rooster! A single shot changes everything. Make that two shots. It was amazing. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Right out of the gate. Today we hunt pheasants. That was good stuff. But in all reality, we aim to provide relief from anxiety and post-traumatic stress. Nicely done, man. Oh, that boy. This is more about healing than it is about hunting. Your heart started beating a little bit? A little bit. Yeah? <laughs> You're one with the bird. <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> Up at the top of the hill. Sam's a part-time guide at Buffalo Butte Ranch. 
He also operates a nonprofit organization called Believe It, serving soldiers that have given their all. Believe It trains service dogs free of charge for disabled military veterans. Quinn Wilmarth, Ryan Conrad, Greg Graves, and Scott Lisberger have all passed Sam's year-long training course. After graduation, Sam invites them here yes, sir. There we got to experience fellowship in the field. Birds on Santa did, did you see it's only the Marine Corps that's got birds? And the pheasant hunting rush of a lifetime. That's two. Army's making a comeback. But we still got all day tomorrow, so anything can happen. Nice. Started two for two, right? Two for two. Yes. Now what are you? Two for six? Probably yeah. somewhere. <laughs> Echo, come on. Just being out here, absolutely incredible. The hunt was fun, but it's just the, the piece here that it's just relaxing. There's nothing going on, not a care in the world. Picture time. A single photo captures a pheasant hunting first for four American heroes. Thing is, Sam Daly's journey looks similar to these wounded soldiers. He wants to help the veteran when all actuality, he's the real hero in it. There's a whole lot more to Sam's story than simple pheasant hunting acts of kindness. The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Waltons, Benelli, Ruffland Performance Kennels, and by Nutrisource. On a peaceful day in South Dakota's pheasant country, fellowship in the field masked battle scars for a group of American soldiers. Here, boy. Murphy, here. His full name is Major Audi Murphy. Come on, let's go, find him up. Scott Lisberger suffers from anxiety caused by a mission that remains confidential. Get up front, get up front. So, um, I, I have a condition with my nerves. So. Ryan Conrad's tour in the Marines ended with a collapsed lung and nerve damage that can't be repaired. At times, I'll, uh, my, hands, my hands start to get stiff and sometimes they freeze up on me. Ryan can put words to his struggles but Greg Graves and Quinn Wilmarth Good girl. have trouble explaining theirs. It takes a toll on us to talk about it. Quinn's unit deployed in Kuwait, battling on the front lines during Operation Desert Storm. Yeah, I was with 3rd Battalion, 3rd Marines. We were part of the, the big shift into the middle of the desert. There was nothing around. So we walked somewhere between 15 and 18 miles through two minefields to get into position. On their second night in the desert, all hell broke loose. We got rocketed, and it was fairly close where you could feel the vibrations from it. And after that point, I went about two weeks that I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. Days turned to weeks, and the shots kept coming. Kind of the golden hour for us was 10 o'clock at night is when they would shoot. There's nowhere to hide. You almost have to come to the realization you're gonna die, it doesn't matter, you're not gonna feel it, to get back to, yes, you can function now, you can eat. Quinn made it out alive, 
but his life would never be the same. To this day, I can be up for over 24 hours, and if I don't go to bed and sleep before nine o'clock, I'm awake. To this day, his mind remains stuck in fight mode. It's kind of the worst thing imaginable. You're very alone, you're very isolated. You no longer fit into anything. What was your role? Black Hawk crew chief. Greg Graves can relate. First tour was uh, to Kosovo. I was 21 years old and turned 22 when I was there. So it was training flights and it was basically a peacekeeping mission. March of that year, the whole country erupted in riots and we had to fly over, drop CS canisters down there to disperse the crowds. There's a lot of people killing each other and pretty sketchy over there. In October of 2003, he deployed to Iraq. 18 months there, and that was, uh, was Blackout Crew Chief again. But there were more combat missions there. Got shot at quite a bit more, and it's a little different than the peacekeeping side. A real wake-up call that there was people in the world that wanted to kill you. On January 10th, 2008, Greg's life changed forever. About 100 feet off the ground, we flew right over an embedded machine gun. Saw muzzle flashes and wasn't sure I was going to make it home that day. It was deployed again after that, and there wasn't a, a break to really soak in all of the, the things that were painful. In Afghanistan, I was on the ground the whole time. I was a supply sergeant working 13 hours a day. It was a pretty boring time because there weren't any direct fire. On the ground in Afghanistan, Greg eventually became numb to war. I remember one night, a rocket came in 75 meters from us, and I was walking down the street like nothing happened. <laughs> it was weird to think about afterwards that, that people could get numb to getting shot at. Back at home, all of those shots finally took their toll. Yeah, for years, I relived it. I couldn't sleep. I, uh, I would have nightmares when I did get to sleep. I was up at all hours of the night, loaded guns. Yeah, I think that was the moment where I was like, I need to start taking a step back. Greg's wife found Sam Daly. Anybody have everything they need? a man that would soon change Greg's life forever. The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism, Big Timber Fasteners, Thoroughgood Boots, Sage and Breaker, Truxedo, and by Aluma Trailers. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Sam Daly has trained dogs for more than 30 years. The skills are all the same. You know, hunting is 90% obedience. A lot of the service work we do is 90% obedience. In 2010, he received an invitation to train them for the United States Marine Corps. It was pretty surreal, really. It was, it was almost like being in a movie. After talking with his wife, Sam accepted the assignment. It was the best thing I've ever done, and it was the worst thing I've ever done. So we trained all the marine handlers, and of course we trained all the dogs to detect the odors of buried explosives, primarily and also to detect weapons caches. Those dogs led soldiers on the front lines into enemy territory. I was attached to the U.S. Marine Corps and did two deployments to Helmand Province, Afghanistan. Both Sam and his dogs were highly effective at their jobs. There's no fooling the dog. They're going to detect it regardless of what is used to mask or cover it. 
finding and pointing out in a passive way where these dangers were, saving limbs and lives, uh, and certainly a lot of heartache for many families. But their job, like the Marines, uh, are to defeat, you know, defeat the enemy, defeat the threat. So I saw not only that, that battlefield detection, but also the personal benefit of having a companion like that watch their back to comfort them, uh, to provide some joy and recreation even with them. After his second tour in Afghanistan, Sam struggled to leave the dogs and soldiers behind. We landed at March Air Force Base, got off the C-17 aircraft, and the dogs were literally taken out of the hands of the Marines loaded on a dog trailer, and down the road they went for their next assignment. And it was heartbreaking to see that. I really was in a fog. I didn't really want to train family dogs or hunting dogs anymore. I just had really very little interest in doing something that seemed so trivial compared to what I had been so focused on for the, the previous three years. In 2015, he found his answer. Sam started the organization Believe It, training dogs to serve soldiers back home. Now, this is Loyal. Uh, I got him uh, just over three years ago from Believe It. And it's been a lifesaver. So it's a non-pharmaceutical way to deal with the symptoms of post-traumatic stress. At his kennel in Northfield, Minnesota, each dog gets trained specifically to match their veterans' needs. This is Thor. He can fetch on command, he can push drawers closed, he can push buttons if needed. Some dogs learn to retrieve household items, others provide emotional support that ultimately leads to freedom. So like I mentioned earlier, a lot of them have sleep problems. Near death, vivid, traumatic dreams. What the dog does, is they go in and, and they recognize the, the thrashing behavior, the sweating, and so they'll turn on a light switch and pull the bedding off the bed. Disrupt the nightmare. The veteran can wake up in a lighted room in a more calm way. If I'm having a bad day or, or stressed out, she's there just very caring and uh, just wants to make sure everything is, is better. You know, I can get very emotional about it but it's something that we just keep forging ahead because there's a lot of need out there. A need that his clients say they can't live without. Pretty much all of our clients have said this. What is your service dog worth to you? Um, you can't put a dollar value on it. And where would you be without your service dog? I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here without my service dog. One hero helping another. Sam's noble mission continues to save lives. It's been a lifesaver, like I said in the beginning. It's pretty great. Straight ahead, grateful soldiers take aim one more time in a field full of pheasants. Pheasants Forever remains committed to protecting and restoring America's wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and your $35 membership will help us to create healthy habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your investment will make a difference today that will last forever. Heroes live all around us. Most days, they can be hard to spot. Find them up. But today, Let's go find them up. today, they wear blaze orange. Get up there, get up there, find them up. Scott Lisberger, find them up. Ryan Conrad, Quint Wilmarth, and Greg Graves all carry scars from their time in service. So, uh, some physical. I, I have a condition with my nerves. Others, emotional. You know, everybody wants to fix you. The smile, you know, don't you feel better? Yeah, you know, I have, I definitely still have my own fears. Sam Daly fights his own demons. You know, it depends on what day you ask me. But he doesn't let fear stop his mission. 
I guess this is more about healing than it is about hunting, coming to this beautiful place in South Dakota. I mean, this scenery, guys that I know are gonna protect me if, if the excrement hits the oscillator. It's just going out there and, and hunting. Time spent fighting for our freedom will forever bond these men together. No matter what conflict you've been in, you're all brothers. Sam's service dogs provide a bond that makes this brotherhood grow even stronger. I love it. I'm extremely grateful for all that he does for me and everyone else. Great, great guy, great guy. And he doesn't classify himself as a veteran. Yeah, he didn't sign the dotted line that we all did. He went to help others. He had a choice to go. And he has the choice to train dogs that change lives, serving one disabled veteran at a time. You know, there's not a pill you can take. There's not a class you can be in that gives the emotional relief that the dogs do. The panic attacks are gone. The problems are subsiding. Nothing is, is cured, but it's in the back of my head instead of right up front now. In South Dakota's bird country, Sam Daly's mission comes full circle. Rooster, rooster. No. Providing freedom for heroes that fought to save ours. Um, these veterans earned it. They earned it. I never thought that I would be one of the guys that would be able to get the help that I needed. And I'm just so proud to be a part of the program. He's a good pup. He's a good pup.